Dear friends, a few words about the wonderful, the enchanting Sir John Betjeman, uh, a poet of the later 20th century, uh, greatly loved in Britain. He was a familiar figure uh, on TV and uh, perhaps the most fondly loved of all British poets of my lifetime. So I think his poems speak for themselves. They are uh, deeply nostalgic um, uh, in many ways, and they speak fondly of a vanishing, a steadily vanishing Britain. But I've included more the ones that have immediately personal uh, meaning, I think, for anyone uh, who is in their, in their situation. And you can see his deftness with verse uh, and the sweetness of his character and the melancholy of his character. Uh, very important. So I'm concerned that there are many words in the poems I've given you that are going to cause uh, a problem. And uh, so I'm quickly going to run through, not all of them, but I've, I've started with a wonderful poem called Sun and Fun, uh, which is entirely uh, ironic. It's, if not sarcastic, um, it's the thing that, alas, is absent from the life of the narrator, who is a um, aging nightclub owner. And she begins, I walked into the nightclub in the morning. There was kummel, a kind of alcohol. On the handle of the door, the ashtrays were unemptied, the cleaning unattempted, and a squashed tomato sandwich on the floor. I pulled aside the thick magenta curtains, it's a brownish purple, so regency, so regency, my dear. They were installed, these curtains, uh, for the fashionable quality of their thickness and their color, uh, which is a, a color much favored in the regency period in the 1820s. I pulled aside the thick magenta curtains, so regency, so regency, my dear, and a host of little spiders ran a race across the ciders to a box of baby pollies by the beer. Pollies were uh, just a kind of fizzy drink, a polinaris is what that's short for. Oh, sun upon the summer going by paths, where everything is speeding to the sea, and wonder beyond wonder that here where lorries thunder, those are the trucks, the sun should ever percolate to me. When Boris used to call in his sedanka, a long vanished sports car, when Teddy took me down to his estate, when my nose excited passion, when my clothes were in the fashion, when my bows were never cross if I was late. I don't think we quite believe that. There was sun enough for lazing upon beaches. There was fun enough for far into the night. But I'm dying now and done for. What on earth was all the fun for? For I'm old and ill and terrified and tight. Wonderful final lines. You need to know that tight is a British word for drunk. Um, then there's a poem called Harrow on the Hill, uh, which is indeed a hill just to the north of London, uh, famous for housing a, a boarding school that I attended myself, uh, Harrow School. And it talks of electric trains, the, the, uh, uh, the subway before it was sub, um, and it speaks of um, the whole landscape as though it were a, a, a seaport, a rocky island in the sea, uh, although it isn't, and it mentions um, a few places in Britain, particularly when um, he gradually, his idea of, uh, of the view as being a view of the sea uh, gathers strength and he talks about rough pentire uh, down in the west country of England on the sea. Um, 
and uh, a race for Padstow, uh, the holy port of Padstow uh, on the north coast uh, of uh, Devon, where uh, the uh, holy because the, uh, uh, the monks arrived there uh, from Ireland to start uh, and, and, and the early Cornish church. So then comes a poem uh, which is irresistible, which he regretted ever writing. In the Second World War, and when the bombing began, he wrote a poem starting, Come, friendly bombs, and fall on Slough. Slough is a, a, a town uh, to the west of London, a, a, a creature of the industrial age, and that's why he hated it so. He thought the ugliness of the industrial architecture was unforgivable. Come friendly bombs and fall on slough. It isn't fit for humans now. There isn't grass to graze a cow. Swarm over death. Come bombs and blow to smithereens. Those air-conditioned bright canteens, cafeterias. Tinned fruit, tinned milk, tinned meat, tinned beans, tinned minds, tinned breath. Mess up the mess they call a town, a house for 97 down, Gosh, you get a house for 97 pounds those days, and once a week a half a crown, that's uh, two and a half shillings for 20 years, and get that man with double chin who will always cheat and always win, who washes his repulsive skin in women's tears and smash his desk of polished oak and smash his hands so used to stroke and stop his boring dirty joke and make him yell but spare the bald young clerks who had the profits of the stinking cad it's not their fault that they are mad they've tasted hell it's not their fault they do not know the bird song from the radio it's not their fault they often go to Maidenhead uh, a little town on the River Thames, and talk of sport and makes of cars in various bogus Tudor bars, bars in faux uh, 15th century uh, architecture, and don't look up and see the stars, but belch instead. They bup. In labour-saving homes with care, their wives frizz out peroxide hair and dry it in synthetic air and paint their nails. Come, friendly boy and fall on slough to get it ready for the plough. The cabbages are coming now. The earth exhales. All his life, uh, Betjeman was a great defender of the natural scene against the crassness of uh, much architecture that beset uh, Britain in the post-war era. Death in Leamington is the next one. She died in the upstairs bedroom by the light of the evening star that shone through the plate glass window from over Leamington Spa. Not a, not a particularly glorious place, although it sounds that way, a retirement town. Beside her, the, uh, the lonely crochet lay patiently, a patient and unstirred. She was working at this nitty. But the fingers that would have worked it were dead as the spoken word. And nurse came in with the tea things, breast high amid the stands and chairs, but nurse was alone with her own little soul, and the things were alone with theirs. Love that line. She bolted the big round window, she let the blinds unroll, she set a match to the mantle, this was to get the gas fire going, she covered the fire with coal, or the coal fire, and Tea, she said in a tiny voice. Wake up, it's nearly five. Oh, chintzy, chintzy cheeriness. Half dead and half alive. Chintz is a kind of uh, crude, cliched, vulgar uh, design uh, pattern for material. Do you know that the stucco is peeling? Do you know that the heart will stop? from those yellow Italianate arches. Do you hear the plaster drop 
Nurse looked at the silent bedstead, at the grey decaying face, as the calm of a Leamington evening drifted into the place. She moved the table of bottles away from the bed to the wall, and tiptoeing gently over the stairs, turned down the gas in the hall. No need to keep it warm anymore. So this is a nursing home where many people wind up and die. Mortality is the next uh, poem. Um, and I'm going to uh, jump it, I think, because uh, otherwise I'm taking too much time up reading. It's the mention of a Humber, which is a car, um, and it's about uh, a minister uh, who uh, uh, is an efficient administrator, suddenly gone, suddenly dead, and his brains, his first-class brains, are sweetbread on the road today. If you don't know what sweetbread is, good to look it up. The Subaltern's Love Song is a, a famous poem um, which uh, is a declaration of love, uh, famous to a beloved of Britain, Miss J. Hunter Dunn, Miss J. Hunter Dunn, furnished and burnished by Aldershot Sun. Aldershot is a town in the south of England. What strenuous singles we played after tea, we in the tournament, you against me. Love 30, love 40, oh. Weakness of joy, the speed of a swallow, the grace of a boy, with carefulest carelessness, gaily you won. I am weak from your loveliness, Joan Hunter Dunn. And the, the poem, as you will see, celebrates this sporting uh, Amazon, this Joan Hunter Dunn. Interesting choice uh, of uh, passion for uh, Betjeman, who was shall we say, somewhat bisexual, had crushes on boys um, and fine, and married and had two children um, and so had a perfectly heterosexual life uh, punctuated by these occasional crushes. And you can see in Miss Joan Hunter Dunn um, the lineaments of his passion for boys as much as his passion for girls. So there are some other wonderful poems. There's one in particular I wish I'd included now, uh, which is, if you can bear it specifically, about death um, and, and a description of uh, the moment of dying when everything is alive outside the room and the birds are singing and you're dying. This is an important subject, I think, for poetry and, and, and sternly and precisely uh, uh, described um, and it's touching and painful and speaks of the remorseless eye that Betjeman brought uh, to his subjects and to death as his subject in particular. He would not look away and there the poet is whom we honour. So. I'm going to try and find that uh, poem and add it to this uh, uh, as, a, as a little second uh, afterthought uh, to uh, my, my Betjeman presentation. Um, the, uh, any other words that you don't know, please try and track them down because I might uh, uh, quiz you on them and I want to know that you had the kindness uh, to watch my video and hear the sweet uh, colloquial voice of, of John Betjeman, at once exquisitely uh, formal and uh, in command of, of versification and meter, at the same time uh, conversational, uh, like uh, a f dear friend whispering in your ear. I hope you find it that way at any rate. and. Uh, uh, I'm now going to go and look for the poem that I failed to include. Till then, all the best.